Hello, my name is Ryan, and today I'm going to show you how to connect um, two VMs on VirtualBox, put them on the same network, and have them so that they, they can talk to one another. Um, now you might say, hey, you know, aren't there a ton of videos already showing you how to do this? Um, and you'd be correct, right? You'd be right. Um, but I don't think they're that straightforward. I think sometimes they're too complicated, and who knows? You know, maybe we'll insert a little bit of humor. You know, we'll see where the night takes us. But um, let's begin. So what do we see? Uh, I have two VMs running. Uh, on the left is my Kali box, right? So this is one VM, and on the right is my Metasploitable 2 VM. Uh, Metasploitable, just for context, it's a box that's made to be broken into. It's a pen tester's tool um, for practice. But um, if you don't know what a VM is, it's basically just a virtual machine. All it is doing is it is um, its own computer, essentially, its own isolated computer. Right on the left, my Kali. Picture it as if it's its own laptop, my Kali machine. And on the right is a completely different computer. Picture if it's a different laptop, right? Um, that's basically what a VM is. The only difference is for a VM, it's as if you were running all of these different computers on the same hardware, right? So my one computer is actually booting up three different PCs right now, three different uh, OSs, which is pretty cool. Um, so what are we testing? Well, right now I have a Kali box and I have a Metasploitable box and they cannot talk to one another. How do I know that? Let's log into Metasploitable. I know that because when I look at the Metasploitable uh, IP, I can't show my cursor in there, unfortunately, but um, the IP is 10.0.2.15. Um, I actually cannot access or reach that IP via my Kali machine. If we go to Kali and do Control Shift Plus until the text is huge, right, ridiculously big. That looks pretty ridiculous to me. Um, we see we, it actually has the same IP. And that's because both of these VMs are using what's called NAT or network address translation. Um, so they can't talk to each other, um, but they can both talk to the internet, um, which is not good. It's not what I want. Um, one thing we know about Metasploitable, you don't have to follow these steps. This is just, just want to show you one thing that tells you that you basically can't connect. Um, if I end map scan it, it has port 80 open. And you might be asking, right, what is port 80? It's HTTP, right? So you probably most commonly have heard of it. Um, when you look at your URL bar, you see either HTTP or HTTPS. It stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and it's basically just how we browse the internet. Um, so the fact that on the computer on the right, we have port 80 open, or HTTP, means that there's a website running on this particular machine. So if these two computers are connected, theoretically, the Kali machine, the machine on the left, should be able to access the website from the machine on the right. So let's test that out. On the machine on the left, we're going to go to, not Safari, Firefox. And we're going to type in 10.0.2.15. That's the IP address of the machine on the right. We're going to hit enter. And as we see, we're not able to connect. Now, this machine is internet connected. We can show that by going to Reddit, great site. Um, but unfortunately, these two machines are not on the same network and cannot communicate. So I'm going to show you how to change that. So first, what you have to do is you have to open up the Virtual Box Manager. Right? You're going to want to go to Tools. You're going to go to these three lines, slash dots. You're going to go down to Network. And you may see an already pre-configured network setup. If that's the case, great. If not, right, I'll show you how to make one. Right, I'll remove this. All you need to do is click Create. Yes. Um, and what you all need to do, whether this network was pre-configured or not, is make sure that DHCP server is enabled. Um, why do we need to enable it? Uh, because this is actually what will give our boxes IP addresses later on so that they could use that to talk to one another. So just keep in mind, DHCP should be enabled. I'm now going to put my boxes on the network I just created. Right? So just to reiterate, we just created a virtual or private network, right? Or we just created, excuse me, a, a, a private network. Um, and this is what we're going to be putting our machines on top of, right? So keep the, the name in mind. We're going to configure our VMs to use this. First, I go to Kali. I'm going to go to Settings. And I'm going to quickly realize I can't change any of these settings without closing the machine down, right? So I'm going to X this out, right click, close. I'm going to power off the machine. I'm going to turn off that box. I'm going to do the same steps for Metasploitable, close, power off, right? Now that they're both off, I can change those settings. I'm going to click on Kali, go to Settings, Network, and we see my first network adapter is NAT. This is Network Address Translation. This is what gives my computer on the left access to the Internet. But we're actually going to go to Adapter 2. We're going to click Enable Network Adapter, and we're going to put this on Host Only. 
So now we should be on the private network, right? So we should see the name of the private network we just created before. If you don't, problems. If you do, great. Um, I do, which means great. So I'm going to click OK. I also need to put the Metasploitable 2 VM on that same network. So I'm going to do the same step settings. Um, only difference with this one when I go to network. I'm not going to leave NAT on my Metasploitable 2 box. It's supposed to be purposely vulnerable, so I don't actually like it having internet connectivity. I'm just going to change NAT to host only as well. And I see my network name here as well. Now that we have those settings configured, let's boot up both the boxes. So I'm going to click yes, yes, um, switch, switch. And while those boot up, I'm going to stare longingly into the camera. Great. Um, so our boxes are booted. Hope you enjoyed that little longing stare there. Um, always good just to, to break away from tech for a second, get some human interaction. Uh, on the left, I'm going to sign into Kali, hit enter. On the right, I'm going to sign into MSF admin, right? My Metasploitable box. Um, of course, your VMs are going to be different than mine. It could be literally any com computers, any VMs that you're using. This will work on within VirtualBox. Um, so what I need to do now, and I'll do it on Kali first, control shift plus plus plus, I'm going to do IPA. And as we see, well, actually, I'm going to make this a little smaller. IPA, Ooh, IP, that's a beer. All right, IPA. Uh, what I see is that this IP address is now configured to ETH1, right? So before I just had two network interface cards. I had low and I had ETH0, right? Low isn't really an interface card. Um, it's a loopback address. But before I only had ETH0, after those changes we just made when we added the card, we now have this ETH1 network interface. It has this IP address of 192.168.17.4. And if this looks familiar, you are correct. It looks familiar because it has the same th three starting numbers as our network. That's how you know this machine's on that network because it's going to have the same three starting numbers, 192.168.17. Um, now your third number, the 17, might be different for you, right? It's probably going to be different. Maybe it's like a 54, 192.168.54 or something. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, so that is configured properly. Great. What might happen is when you click IPA, you may see ETH0. You may not see the IP address here. And what you would need to do is you'd have to do sudo, which stands for super user do, or let's do this next command as if I'm an admin on this computer. sudo dh client ETH1, so the name of the network interface we're trying to fix, right, or get an IP address for. All this command is doing is it's going to be using that DHCP setting that we showed before, right? Enable DHCP server. It's going to ask the DHCP server for an IP address, and it's going to assign it to ETH1 here, right? So I'm just going to hit it. I should get a new IP address when I do this. Um, when I do IPA, as you see now, instead of dot four, this is now dot five, right? Um, for you all, you only have to do that step if the IP address isn't popping up for you, right? But for me, it did. It just reassigned me a new one here. Let's look on Metasploitable, IP space A, and we see that this one actually has the IP address configured right off the bat too, which is great. So first way to test connectivity, I'm going to ping the box on the right from the box on my left, which means I'm going to take this IP address to my right, the dot three one, and I'm going to ping it from my Kali machine. So I'm going to ping. 192.168. I'm going to ping and I'm going to put numlocks on. 192.168.17.3. Hit enter. And if we see the 64 bytes popping up, that means you're good. You're connected. If you see reply from and it takes forever and it times out, that's bad. But we didn't get the bad response. We got the good one. So we can connect to our Metasploitable box from our Kali box, which is great. Let's try the same thing on the right. I'm going to clear my screen, get my IP address here. I'm now going to ping this IP address from Metasploitable. So I'm going to do ping 192.168.17.5. Oh, I did IP. Sorry, I got to do ping. I'm goofing. Ping. Great. And as we see, that works as well. Now, for the last step, I showed you before that if these two boxes can really truly talk to each other, they should be able to see that 
and you do not have to copy these steps, you, they should be able to see that on port 80, right, Metasploitable has a web server running, right? So my Kali machine, the box on the left, should be able to go to the website that the machine on the right is running now that they supposedly are connected and can talk. Um, so let's test that out. Once again, Firefox, Fox of Fire. We're gonna, what we're gonna do is to navigate to this, all we're gonna do is type in the IP address of the Metasploitable box. I'm gonna get that up one more time. So it's going to be, 192.168. Uh, what's next? 17.3. When I hit enter, it should no longer give me the sorry we're having get trouble getting your pages back. It'll bring me to the Metasploitable 2 interface. I can go to DVWA, which is just a web page, right? And that is it, right? We are connected. So hopefully that was straightforward enough, right? Hopefully you feel more comfortable with creating this private network on VirtualBox configuring your two VMs to be on top of that network. Um, and if you like the video, smash the subscribe button, you know, hit the like button. Uh, if I get, I don't know, two likes, three likes, uh, maybe I will put time into downloading software that highlights my cursor. I don't know, whatever, whatever you all want. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Hope you have a great Saturday if it's still Saturday. Um, if it's not, hope you have a great whatever day it is. And that's a wrap. So now I'm going to hit that stop recording button. Wish you all goodbye.